I love telling about this part of things because it's just, you know, some, some Christians just go around, especially on Facebook, you'll find all kinds of stuff. People, uh, they'll write anything. They come up with all kinds of stuff just to make God look cooler, you know. And how can you make God look cooler? You can't. Usually you just end up, you think you are, that somebody researches what you said. They find out he was full of you know what, and and then they then that just gives them another reason why not to trust Christians, you know, right. and to believe anything a Christian would say because we're trying to make God seem cooler than what He is, and and He don't need help with that. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, He just don't need any help. He's amazing, and uh, but uh, there's a neat thing, and, and you can you, you can do all the research you want to on this. I mean, I can just tell you this openly: wear yourself out. And you'll find I'm telling you the truth. Uh, they have discovered years, I don't know, probably 15, 20 years ago, I guess, that uh, <clears throat> that uh, we're, you know, our, they, our DNA, which every one of us has, it's different. Every, everybody has, you know, it's like your fingerprint of God on your life. Uh, no one has your DNA. You can be spotted, you know, I mean, they'll pinpoint you down to, out of all the billions of people on earth, they can tell you're you by your DNA. And that's because God made you that way. Well, one of the cool things about DNA is that they discovered that your, your, uh, your DNA is basically a musical encoding. It's uh, if they take the, what looks like this, oh, you knew you've seen all that junk, you know, and I can't tell you what's what on that. But I can tell you this, they can string that thing out in a straight line and it's a song. And it's amazing. And uh, you put that in a computer and you can have this done now. Technology is so wonderful now and you can, you can send your DNA off and they'll, they'll send you your song. It sounds, it sounds like a ringtone. I mean, it's like a piano sound, which is a shame. I thought it should be a banjo or something. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's a, you know, you'll hear your song. Sounds like a little ringtone or something, you know, going on. And, uh, and so God has made us musical. From the very core of our being, he's made us musical. And, and uh, it, you know, because your DNA determines everything about your, your body. The shape of your nose, everything that God made you to be is encoded in your, in your DNA. And the cooler thing about that is that equals a song. You're a song that God wrote. <clears throat> and uh, that's why when you hear music, you know, your foot stop, starts responding and tapping with me, or you start getting that little groovy thing going, or you start humming along, or, you know, different things happen because you are made musical. And I have seen God do stuff with music, and, and especially in the worship realm, you know, when you're worshiping with it. See, the, the, there, uh, there was a time when... when uh, King Saul was, was going around, you know, and then Samuel came to him and said, you know, the prophet Samuel, if you don't know the Bible, he was a prophet. And uh, he came to Saul and he said, about this time tomorrow, you're going to be walking by the hill of God and there's going to be some musicians come off the hill of God and they're going to be playing the names of some instruments off and they're going to be prophesying. And when you come into their presence, you're going to be changed into a different man. You're going to be transformed. Now that right there tells me, and I know where that hill of God is, by the way, been on it. And it's a great place. Actually, uh, uh, Samuel's bones are on that hill. He's entombed in this, this place uh, called Naot Ramah. And that was where he had a school of worship, or school, uh, you know, school of worship, or a school of the prophets, they called it. And uh, in those days, they called it several things. One of the things was the hill of God. Well, they came down off the hill. Here comes Saul. Got into their presence and they's they's picking, they's playing, they's playing some music and they's playing prophetically. And when they when Saul got in their presence, he was transformed into a different man. Now that is what I pray every time I go to play song. Oh, yeah. Lord, let me change the atmosphere in such a way. Let it be so anointed that people are transformed. God. And God will do that. Yes, now, if you're not even a, a musician. You're still musical. So it, even if you sing like the, the sounds of the screams of hell, <laughs> there's power in your voice. <clears throat> now that's true. I remember when I was when I was lost as a goose. Man, I was just I was a wicked somebody. You know, I really was. 
But I was dating a girl who drug me into church, and she didn't want to be there either. It was, just, it was mainly to impress her family, because she was, you know, Sister Beelzebub. I mean, if you ever <laughs> met her. And, uh, and she drug me into this church, and I, I was sitting there just, you know, like, man, i got to get out of this place. Then there was this old lady gets up, and she walks up to the front, and she, she says, well, Sister so-and-so asked me to sing. Not really prepared for this. And uh, she had a book about this big full of songs that she carried around like she's not prepared for this. I mean, uh, that gone. I mean, that's <laughs> right. She was just waiting on somebody to ask her. Probably asked somebody to ask her to sing. And she gets up there to sing, you know, all pitiful like, seemed like to me. Because this is coming from, you know, eyes that were seeing not through God's vision. I, I was, you know, definitely in the world. And so I was seeing everything in this funny way. I would make fun of her the best way I could. And she got up there to sing. She started singing. And, and it was, I mean, the paneling was ripping off the walls. But, I mean, the paint was just peeling. It was horrible. And, you know, I came from a professional music background. I'm sitting there trying to figure out, am I going to laugh at this? Or, or am I going to cry? And, you know, but before she started, she was like this type. It was like, well, y'all just pray for me. I can make it through this. You know, that, I don't know if you ever heard that. That's always a bad sign. <laughs> because you end up sitting there and you're wishing you could make it through that. Now God help me. I don't know if you exist, but if you do, either kill her or help me to make it through it. You know, and uh, that kind of thing goes on. But she, she sang and it was horrible. Just absolutely horrible. And, uh, but in the middle of this, she closed her eyes all of a sudden. And I'm still hearing this awful thing happen, but all of a sudden I start getting chill bumps, and I'm looking around like, going, what in the world? You know, who turned the air conditioning on? You know, that's the awful voice is still going on. But see, what I didn't know, she closed her eyes, started singing to the Lord. And that was still the most pathetic voice you ever heard. But when you are singing or playing or whatever you're doing. Uh, up to the Lord, yes. he ain't listening to your voice. He knows what, what talent he gave you or didn't give you. But see, he he can listen to me play all day long, and, and it may not do a thing for him. I mean, he's not impressed by what I can do with this. I mean, he gave it to me, and that's wonderful, but, but he ain't impressed by that. Now, what he's listening to is my heart. Come on. And that's what he's listening to. So you're musical, and, and, uh, and I'm not telling everybody to go to to sagebrush or longhorn whatever steakhouse and, and start singing in the middle of a crowd just to see what you can do, you might get run off. <laughs> but uh, there's times when your voice is just as powerful or you're, if you play one of these, I mean, it, it, it's as powerful as mine if your heart's aiming it up. Yeah. You may be able to not, do nothing to squeak, but, but if you're aiming it up, there's something powerful can happen because as soon as you touch his heart with it, if you can touch his heart, he'll touch their hearts. Yes, yes. And that's the way it goes. You send it up, he'll send it out. I don't know if anybody knows who Karen Wheaton is. She's a singer down in Alabama, does a bunch of stuff on TV and sings and stuff. Great lady. And you can read in the, I mean, you might hear all kinds of stuff about her being, you know, a diva and all this. That's not true. Anytime you're dealing with, with people talking about Christian folks, they're going to talk bad about them. You never see somebody talk. If you ever see a Christian guy and everybody in the world is talking good about him, watch out. Come on. You know, it's kind of, you better steer clear of that. Something's up. Right. Or liable to be, or soon will be. But anyway, Karen, <clears throat> I went down to her place, and this is, you know, I'll give you example of, after example. Is I just walk in there going to play. You know, she called me up, hey, come play for us. Because I knew her, I used to travel with Tommy Tenney, and I knew her from that. So I go to her youth thing there in, in Alabama called The Ramp, and every one of you ought to go every, well, take your teenagers and stuff to The Ramp. It's awesome. But uh, so I'm in there, and I'm just playing. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm just playing up to the Lord and loving on him. And uh, everything just went nuts in there. And I thought, well, these kids like to worship. You know, they're just going nuts. And then it went from nuts to everybody on their face. And I thought, man, these kids, I, rarely do I see adults on their face laying on the ground worshiping, you know what I mean? But these kids, they's on their face. They's that lying in the altar and everywhere. They's just like somebody went through there with a bunch of shotguns and let loose, you know, they's all down. And then when, uh, every time I'd get ready to quit playing, Karen was on the, 
on the altar, and she looked like a raccoon. All that makeup was just everywhere. <laughs> and uh, and she would uh, she would do this, keep playing, you know, keep playing. And so I kept playing and playing and playing, and I was actually starting getting worried because I started running out of songs after a while. And I was thinking, now I have to start repeating stuff, and I'm going, you know, it's going to look like you know, like some kind of idiot. I'm just repeating songs. It's going to lose its power real quick. But uh, what I didn't know is, is you know, when I when I did get done, she come up to talk, and and she she pointed to a teenager, and there's everywhere. But she pointed to one. She said, "You come up here right now," and he and he came up there, and she said, uh, "Tell everybody what the Lord has done for you." And she held the microphone to his mouth, and he held his hand out, and it was shaking, you know, just like this. And he had something in his hand, and I thought. Are those eyeballs, <laughs> you know, I, mean, I said, what are them? You know, it's the funny looking things in his ears or in his, in his hand. And, uh, and he said, I used to wear these and they were hearing aids. And he'd been this close to death all his life, could barely hear anything, had his big old hearing aids and he could just barely hear something if it was really loud. So they would wear them just in case he could possibly hear something. And uh, during worship, actually during, I was playing Awesome God, which is one of my favorite songs. I was playing Awesome God because he is. And, uh, and he was out there and his ears, all of a sudden he's just like, I can't hear nothing. And it was this loud sound, but he's wondering, why can't I hear nothing now? And he took one out thinking something was wrong with it. Bam, he could hear everything. His ears instantly opened up. And so he pulled the other one out and he went nuts. I mean, he just went eight. That's when, the, the, toward the beginning, that when everything went nuts. He was running all over the place, and everybody was, you know, I didn't know. I, had, I was just worshiping him. All I knew was, hey, there's a ruckus going on out there. I didn't know if it was a fight or what. You know, you know, it's kind of funny when you're just worshiping him, and you hear something going out there, and you're trying not to focus on any of that. You're trying to focus on him. You're everybody's screaming and yelling and stuff, and then next thing you know, when you do it, your eyes, everybody's on the ground. You know, thinking, well, I need to run. You know, <laughs> somebody's not coming here and disturb. Everybody's hiding. But uh, you know that stuff happens. All you got to do is be there. There's times you got to be somewhere, and then sometimes you just got to release your sound. 